We are joined by Les Bartlett. He is a local historian here in Cape Ann and Val Gilman. She is the Ward 4 City Councilor and they recently held a focus group on Palm Beach about our quarries. So thanks for joining us this morning. Thank Happy you, Corey. Thank you, Heather. And can you just sort of explain how this focus group came about and what came of that meeting? So <clears throat> everyone is antsy because everyone wants to start getting ready to have the dialogue about what next with the quarries. And it was becoming particularly more difficult as the pandemic was not ending as quickly as we had thought. So we started site visits for our special council permits that were working. They were social distance meetings, 10, 10 people to a group, six feet apart, masks when you check in. And um, the council felt pretty comfortable uh, with those and we were integrated with the butters. And so I thought, you know what, we probably can start getting some conversation flowing if we took advantage of small groups at the beach with chairs and six feet apart with masks. And so I began working on some of the um, dialogue of what we'd wanna talk about and then reached out to Les who is one of our panelists and he offered to facilitate. And then when I realized that the groups could be bigger than 30 per group, you know, because we had A through M at the first session and N through Z at the second, I reached out to Heather and, and asked her if she could help facilitate a second group. And therefore I could take the 20 to 30 people that might show up to session A or session B as kind of the sweep. And that just put, made me very comfortable. And so Les and, and Heather did a super job with the questions and I was able to kind of roam around and, and listen to the dialogue and greet people when they arrived. And, yeah, I think, so 38 people showed up in all, Val, is that right? 37, yeah. And, which is a great turnout on a weeknight Perfect. in, you know, North Gloucester. Yeah. Right, and there was a Celtics game on that night as well, so <laughs> it was so I, I can say people showed up feeling really earnest about how they felt about the quarries. And, uh, you know, I know this summer there's been a lot of talk about, you know, safety and concern about, you know, terrible things happening up there. But in general, there was a feeling that the community just wanted there to continue to be able to enjoy these quarries and how best can we do that? So it felt like the consensus in my group at least seemed, seemed started out super passionate and ended up very balanced. And, uh, but do you want to talk about the consensus? So we kind of um, pulled together the data and it was nice. I thought um, Taylor at the Gloucester Daily did a nice summary of our meeting. So kudos to Taylor. So, um, so how often do you visit the quarries and access trails in Lanesville? Nine people said a great deal. 15 said a moderate amount. Six said infrequently. And some other people just didn't answer it. It was kind of a polling of hands. What are the top two reasons why you or your family members perceive the quarries as an important part of the Lanesville Gloucester community? The most votes was to hiking, jogging, and dog walking, 22. Next question was, what criteria is most important as we prepare to evaluate best practices? And we asked for top two. And I think Heather and Les had a lot of discussion about that because a lot of people wanted all or some of them got passionate on one. And so um, the, the top vote getter was, and perhaps we, we need to rewrite the question a little bit before we do the survey monkey. But the question was proper and realistic balance between residents usage and supervised managed time monitored by paid personnel or wardens um, for visitors to enjoy. So kind of, uh, you know, a, an adequate amount of time just for residents and then a more controlled time where there would be someone there to monitor it. Um, and that received 17 votes and a lot of discussion. Um, the next highest vote was safety with 14. The fifth question was social media and videography of our Lanesville quarries contributed to the overwhelming crowds in the past few years. 25 strongly agreed, two agreed, neither one neither agreed or disagreed and then no one said they disagreed or strongly disagreed. 
And um, finally, the um, Gloucester quarries are important assets for their beauty and historical significance, similar to the city's beaches, coves, and harbors. Strongly agreed 29, agreed one, and no one uh, voted for anything less than that. And then the fun part, and maybe Les can talk a little bit more about this and Heather, it was the open-ended question where we asked people in 30 seconds or less to describe why they value the quarries. So I don't know if either one of you want to talk a little bit more about what you heard, because I don't want to dominate this interview because this was a team, um, a team conversation. Les, why don't you um, just summarize it and then we'll move on to the best practices meeting and what, what the next steps to this process yeah, are. I, I think I want, want to give a, a global summary by saying the fact that after we went through these questions, which were simply a show of hands as to the yes and no and saying, give me your name, um, give your statement, and I'm going to paraphrase it back to you, made it really personal. Okay? Um, it made it an opportunity first to meet the participants because we all had masks on and some we could recognize. But it was the fact that we stamped the whole listening process with listening to their names and taking the words in accord from that. And this was so important to do, Val, before doing the Survey Monkey. It's not like we do the Survey Monkey and then we ask for a group of people. We began with the people. So I'm just going to kind of get it to the best practices by saying um, the process allowed us to get to very succinct, heartfelt responses. So um, the survey monkey comes next, and this is when the larger community has an opportunity to answer almost these same questions. Is that right, Val? That's exactly right. And I was delighted that the Gloucester Daily offered to um, take the lead in helping us with that. I'll also post it on my Ward 4 page, www.facebook.com slash Val Gilman Ward 4, all one word. Um, and, um, and we'll be able to, um, to do some sensing of the overall community because the quarries belong to everybody in Gloucester. Um, the fact that the majority of people that showed up for our focus groups were from Lanesville and many of the butters there were a couple, there was one woman from Rockport, there was one guy from Ward 5, um, but we wanna make sure that, that this is a resource for all of us. So I think that that's important. And we have a volunteer that came out of the meeting that offered to help me a little bit with the technical parts of SurveyMonkey to get it set up. And um, so that will be the next step. So it's data collection. And, um, and then after the data collection, we'll, we'll be adding three or four more questions to the six that we asked. So we'll have about 10 questions. Um, and then after that, we'll collect it. And then prior to starting off on our best practice Zoom meetings, we'll have a pretty good pulse of how the community is feeling. So that will help us develop some criteria when we listen to the best practices of how other areas um, work. Um, and, um, and, and I think that will be good open dialogue. So um, I'm looking forward to that. The mayor is gonna be a panelist, so is Les. And uh, we'll have some good opportunities to listen to experts talk about Steel Derrick, um, Pleasant Pond. Um, there's another place I, I don't have it in my, right in front of me, I think it's called Baxter. No, it's, Beck uh, it's the Beckett quarries in uh, Beckett, Mass. Okay, thank you, thank you, Les. And, um, and, and that is kind of a, it's a public quarry, but it's kind of managed by, a it's just interesting stuff. And by learning about what other communities have done to be able to manage quarries in a positive way, um, we can learn what we can do. And of course we have to look at costs. You know, we realize that we probably have to, to run this kind of like an enterprise account where we, um, what we bring in for maybe kiosks pays for the warden to oversee or whatever. So, you know, I don't want to jump too far ahead, um, but I just think that we have to be, we have to be mindful that we'll have a limited budget, but we want to do the right thing. So, um, and then a good balance. And is the hope to implement any changes ASAP or in time for maybe next summer? So that's a city question that I have to figure out because there might be an opportunity that they would open for, um, you know, in the in the late fall for walking in the winter time. Because I don't imagine that we would be overburdened by two, three hundred high school kids celebrating their graduation in the quarries, you know. So, 
Um, so, but, but that's not my call. I'll have to work with the city administration about when they could possibly reopen. Um, but our goal is that the more formal plan um, would be able to be rolled out for next spring um, for, for the core use. And I wouldn't be surprised if we would reopen, but again, that's not my call. I have to talk to the enforcement folks and the mayor. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye on your Facebook page for upcoming details. We wanna thank Val Gillen and Les Bartlett for talking a little bit about the quarries with us today, and we'll follow up soon to see what the latest details are. Great. Terrific, thanks, thanks for allowing us. Thanks, thanks Heather, thanks, Corey. Thank, thank you. you. You're awesome, thank you.